Welcome everyone to episode four of the YNCN podcast. We're really excited today to have Christine Yaramich as our guest. Christine, please go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone listening. Hi, okay. Hi everyone. First of all, thank you YNCN and Sophia for inviting me here today. And hi to all listeners. I am Christine Yarmich. I am in my fourth year of mechanical engineering at the University of Toronto in the saw mechanics and mechatronics streams. I just finished my PUI last September while I having the chance to travel to more than seven countries this summer and vlogging all of my trips. It was super exciting. And my PUI consisted of unforgettable opportunities and learning experiences at Siemens, Tesla, and ES Fox. I was able to test the water as a biomedical engineer, automotive and manufacturing engineer, and a nuclear and structural engineer. I'm also currently leading the University of Toronto Super Mileage team as a co-captain and the lead of the hydrogen fueled vehicle, which is new to campus this year. And I'm always trying to stay active and am a player for the UFT varsity squash team. And I am an engineer ambassador for UFT and always wanting to help. So please always feel free to reach out on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you have if you want any advice or tips on school or career or anything. Awesome, Christine. Well, super excited to get to hear about a lot of your experiences and everything you just mentioned, but kind of jumping into your first job. So what was your first job that you got and like, how did you go about getting it? Um, did you have to have any, like, was there anything you did to compensate for maybe like a lack of experience? So for sure, I got my first job after first year. And in my opinion, the most important thing in first year is connections. Even though a lot of people say connections are kind of like the easy way to like finish line, I don't think so. So for example, let's say, well, to build connections and to build a network, you do need a lot of personal and soft skills. And this is where people might lack and require improvement. And they are looking for a lot of communication, teamwork, a good attitude to construct a good team within a company. I think connections are just as difficult as getting the interview and performing well in the interview since you are able to build those relationships with communication, teamwork, and a good attitude. So that already gives you a step ahead and help you just secure that position just a bit more. Yeah, definitely. And also as a first year, it's really like cool to hear that you were able to network and make those connections. Cause I know a lot of people like myself included, seems like a really intimidating when you're just in first year. So like, were there any like, what did you kind of do to go about developing those skills? And did you network and make connections, I guess, through like LinkedIn or like what's been your experience with that so far? Of course. Yes. Great question. So after like first year was definitely very difficult and it made it hard to find any interviews per se. This was the only place I actually was interviewed at and it was a smaller company and they gave me so much experience. And then moving on when I went to like um, apply to larger companies and want to go abroad, I needed to start finding connections online since I couldn't meet them in person anymore because these people, I was meeting through per people, people would say, oh, this person's in engineering, so maybe I can get you in contact with them. And then I was able to like possibly run into them and was able to build the relationship that way. But online, it is a little more challenging, I find. I do this all through LinkedIn. So I have a little blurb that I send when I ask for the request of the connection. And it kind of just overviews what I want and then why I want to work for that company. Not so much why I would be good for the company because they can easily look at my LinkedIn account and know I work at UFT or study at UFT, what I study, more of like why I want to work there and why I think it's a great spot to work. Yeah, that's, that's really good advice. Um, I guess the next thing you kind of mentioned um, all like your extracurricular experience, but um, how do you think those experiences contributed to like your professional journey and how did they help? Um, you mentioned some design themes if you want to for context also um, go over like what they are too. Of course, yeah. So the most important things that I take back and I'm really happy that I did is I tried new things. So I did a little bit of student government. I did some design engineering, and then I did some athletics through the UFT varsity squash team. 
But before I was on the varsity squash team, for example, I decided to start a squash club and I started the UFT squash club. And then I took a step back from that because I decided I wanted to do varsity squash and travel a bit and go to different universities. And then another big thing was the University of Toronto Super Mileage teams. Being a part of that team has helped me grow my knowledge so much because of all the different applications within the team. So I just want to give a couple examples because I think different disciplines feel like they're not, they wouldn't be able to contribute to a vehicle. When you look at like the depth of a vehicle, you can contribute every type of engineering. Well, there's mechanical engineering. It's what everyone thinks when they think cars, but then you go closer in, there's a lot of electrical components. You have to code a materials engineer just to understand what kind of materials we need for, for example, our air body or chassis. A chemical engineer, for example, for our fuel cell, because we're doing a hydrogen vehicle, we need someone who is probably more experienced and has more knowledge in that. There's so many potentials and so many needs for different engineering. And that's why I really appreciate engineering teams. And so if I went back in time, I would commit myself to a vehicle engineering team, even if I'm not so thrilled about it, because I'm first and second year, I was like, I have no idea about cars. I don't even know what's in a car. Like, what is a powertrain? I did not know what consisted of a vehicle. So yes, for all first and second years, definitely try to commit to a team and just commit to it because there's so many different possibilities and areas that you can change into and learn different things. You don't have to stick with a very mechanical subject. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely a big thing. Like also for myself, like in general, like I didn't, I didn't know all those opportunities existed for all the different disciplines. <laughs> like, yeah. So I can't even imagine for sure, like going back to first year, knowing that would be really, really nice. How did you pick, I guess, which design team you wanted to join? And did you have, did you intentionally pick which design team you wanted to join? Because I know you mentioned that you joined like later on uh, throughout university. Like, did you intentionally pick it like to be uh, with keeping in mind your professional career goals? Yeah, great question. I didn't really, I didn't have it for the intention of pursuing something in the automotive. I was always interested in Tesla because they're super innovative and they're just growing so fast and it's just really nice to see like how much they're achieving in such a short time. So I liked that aspect that they were able, they were very efficient and they were able to get things done, but I wasn't like super passionate about cars at the time. And I just joined a car team mostly because my friends were on it. And another reason was because I wanted to get involved and understand like how cars work. And then once I got there, I understood that there's so many different aspects of it. One person, one discipline can't really do the whole thing. I guess kind of like this might have like an answer about something that you've already mentioned, but like what's one investment that you made, whether it's like a course you took or a relationship you made that has paid off the most in your professional career so far? Yeah, great question. So I think taking a lot of design courses, mm -hmm. I heard a lot where it's like, oh, do just non-design courses, I'll call it that. Yeah. And I find the design courses, I do learn a lot more, especially industrial applicated. And so what I would recommend for anyone is take the design courses, um, even though they are a little bit more work, I really recommend them because I was able to talk about them on a lot of interviews for my internships and for my right now applying to future jobs. And then I guess kind of like you mentioned before, networking, like design teams, extracurriculars, and then also like internships, job applications. So kind of putting that all together, what's your perspective on, like your personal perspective on how much time you should spend improving your professional image and those necessary things to get a job versus actually like growing um, your engineering skills? Or what balance did you find between the two that you were, have been using? I think it changes per company, to be honest. Like some companies like more professional skills, more like engineering skills. I find if you don't have like the soft skills, professional skills, good communication, good teamwork, it's hard to convey your like engineering design. Like if you're not able to yeah. explain how you design this vehicle door with your team how are you going to attach this car door to the car that's why i think they work very well in parallel because if you don't have engineering skills then you're just not able to actually give a product but if you can't communicate it you're going to give a product that 
isn't functional. So <laughs> definitely sounds like a fine line between the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cars without any doors, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess diving into your um, PUI journey, working abroad and stuff, um, you mentioned before, but quickly, just to like kind of reiterate, um, you broke your internship down into multiple um, separate internships. So like, what were those roles? And um, I guess, what were the location of those roles since you did work abroad as well? Yeah, so I, with COVID, it made a little bit of struggle, so I ended up staying in Canada a bit longer, and I worked at ES Fox as a structural engineer, so I did a little bit of joists, beams, columns, and vessel design, and then I went, in September, I went to Germany, and I started working for Siemens Health and Nears. so here I worked as a biomedical engineer intern, where I worked with PCBs and hospitals of the future research. I did that for seven months, and then I hopped to Tesla for five months during the summer. And I worked as a manufacturing and automotive engineer. So I had the chance to design some jigs and fixtures and then also do some project management. So that was really cool. And then while I was in Germany, I also got to travel. So biggest thing <laughs> is definitely go abroad when you're doing your internships. I really recommend it because I think it's a great time to see the world without having to commit to a specific place. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's really cool. Those sound like really awesome experiences. So how did you go about securing those internships, especially the ones um, in Germany? Because that's not a process that might be like known to students through the PUI portal. So how did you go about doing that? Yeah, good question. So I didn't use the PUI portal when I was applying to my PUI. So I actually took the year off and I did my own internships. I did it actually just the exact same as applying as a domestic student, like to a Canadian company. So it's pretty much the exact same process. The only thing is, is that the resumes look a little differently. There was still like very traditional black and white resumes, but I found more international resumes had maybe more color, a little more neat. It had a picture. Did you have to like apply for any visas or anything when you were working abroad or how did, was that also a part of the like application process? Uh, being a European citizen, I am a little lucky. Okay. Yeah, so I, didn't have to, I didn't have to worry about visas or during the COVID pandemic. I know it's a really, really big struggle. I do know a couple of people who have gone through it. So if you are interested, anyone here listening could reach out and I can get you in contact with the people. That I know. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be helpful for anyone that's really interested about that. Um, did you, when you had those multiple internships, so did you have a plan for how you wanted to spread it out? Um, did you want like opportunities in different industries? Like what was your kind of like mindset about um, how you spread out that year? Went into it thinking I'm going to continue with fourth year unless I get a job at Siemens or Tesla. Like that was my go-to. I was like, if I don't, I'm not going to do PUI. And then I ended up getting Siemens like mid second semester of third year. And then I was like, okay, this is great. Like I don't have to like, go back to school for another year. And then COVID hit and I was like, oh no. And then my PUI got, or like the Siemens job got postponed. And so then I had to start in September. I ended up working at ES Fox during the summer. I interviewed there. It all worked out. They lived like a 20 minute drive from my parents' house. So I just stayed there. It was super nice. And then I went to Germany from September to like April. And I had no plan after April. I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep applying to Tesla in California and see if I get it. With COVID, it was like so hectic and they weren't really taking a lot of um, international students at the moment. And so that made it hard. But then the Berlin position started opening internships and that was amazing. I applied immediately. I, I applied to three positions and then two of them I got interviews for. And I accepted the one and then that was from April to end of August. And that was really exciting because I was in Berlin. I was close to an airport. I got to travel like every <laughs> other weekend. It was amazing. Oh my God. How many, it's like, was it kind of like you would work and then you traveled on the weekends and then came back and got to like continue working the next week type of thing? It was, no, it was, <laughs> it was actually unbelievable. So I went to a couple different places. I did take a couple days off, but me and some of the other interns, because we got really close, we decided that we would just do weekend trips. 
and we would leave like right after work and yeah working at Tesla you do work a little bit later so when I say right after work that's like six maybe seven (laughs) p.m. to Vienna Austria it was a 10-hour bus ride and we just slept on the bus we got up we had an Airbnb there for one night and like we didn't even sleep that night because it was one of our friend's birthdays the next night we got back on the bus and then that next morning we got back at around 8 a.m and we just went right back to work that's actually an unbelievable experience wow (laughs) that's crazy and like that's wait like good for you that you said that you wanted to see our Tesla and like it all ended up working out <laughs> yes if you believe it like I never thought it before this year but if you really believe it and go for it like you can achieve anything like if you put your mind to it you can get it <laughs> I was gonna ask like what's your approach in applying to roles did you apply to like many as many places as possible like I, I don't know I feel like you might have already answered that or like in general do you try to like perfect your application for specific intentional roles or do you broadly just apply to lots of roles and then see like what you hear back I try to tell everyone apply to a few companies and really show that you're passionate about working there I'm looking at my plan in my room at the moment if you have a plant and someone's like super interested in this plant and like gives you all the knowledge of this plant like oh my god you water it so much oh it's such a beautiful plant oh it's so nice compared to someone who's like I don't know like oh the pH of a good soil is the soil it's yeah. like you want the person who's super interested in that plant you want to give that plant to that person because you know they're going to take like good care of it yeah. so it's like a job you kind of have to show that you're passionate about what you want to get into so I think that's the biggest thing when I was applying I really showed that I was passionate about working for that company and you can only really do that if you apply to a few companies can't do that to 30 companies in my opinion because for me I would spend about I don't know five hours on just my cover letter because I want to really like give all the details so for example I was like I did go to all these things I really did. I'm really interested in them. So I said like the battery day, I was there. I stayed up super late because of the time difference. And I just like gave these like examples, like how passionate I am. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. So then like you would tailor your resume and cover letter for those applications, making yes. you stand out as a stronger candidate. And we can see how passionate you are because employers and when they're also having a conversation with you having a conversation with people who have like passion for mutual subjects is probably completely different than just like someone that's applying to every single position exactly Mm -hmm. is tell everyone apply to two to three companies and then apply to a max of like two to three positions at that company that's definitely some useful advice for people listening and like makes a lot of (laughs) logical sense so I guess like you've also interviewed at these different roles and different industries so how did you change, how, if, if you changed um, approaches to interviewing, how did you change it? And like, um, how did you just in general prep yourself for those interviews? I know in third year, I did apply to just the ones I really want to work at. And then I applied to a couple because I want to improve my, my interview skills. So I think the biggest thing, a lot of people get intimidated while they're in interviews sometimes. And you just have to think about it as that could be like your friend. That could be some, and it is someone's friend. It is someone's brother. And so you can also think of it that way. And that's what I'm starting to do. I'm like, this is just a regular person. Like you don't have to be shy or intimidated by this person and just feel relaxed and not stressed out about it. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely that mindset helps. Um, And like, how did you go about getting a job at Tesla? Just there's some crazy statistics out there on the internet of like, I don't know how many percentage of people that apply get a job or something. So I feel like a lot of um, listeners might be interested in hearing about that experience. And if you want to build on that, like how is um, working in Germany, meeting people? I feel very happy and fortunate that I did get the position. It has taught me so much. They do push you a lot and they support you a lot. Mm -hmm. The people on my team and my mentor specifically has helped me so much that I'm just like I owe so much to him like I've learned how to 
just really get a lot of work done efficiently and to not like give up. Like he always found a different, another solution to another problem, like get over run by all the problems. He was like, no, there's a way to solve this. We're going to solve it right now, right here. The same with like the emailing in Tesla. Like you don't wait two minutes. Like you send that email as soon as you read it. And that was like very different compared to some other like companies I have um, experience with Tesla. It's like, I know this person is in the factory right now, like doing work, but I'm going to message him and just ask him like, like a more technical question. I remember messaging some people and they go back to me in less than 30 seconds. Wow. And I was like, I know you're in the factory. One, two, how do you have Wi-Fi? Three, I know you're working on something else. You don't have to answer me right now. So that was the coolest thing. Like once you have like a few people doing it, you're like, okay, I need to catch up and I also need to do it. And that's the mentality they always have. And that's why I think it's so much more efficient. And I really appreciate that. It made things really fast. Awesome. Like working environment as well. When you're like in that environment with those mentors and all those people helping you throughout your professional career. Yes. No, I like really appreciated that. And I feel like Tesla does that specifically. Like they kind of give you buddy or mentor, for example. And I think I got really lucky with my mentor. He's so great. So how did you go about um, meeting new people when you were working in Europe and also um, was it difficult, I guess, to find um, housing in Germany while you were working there? Oh, so that was all pretty simple. I mean, Tesla or Siemens didn't really support with the housing. They kind of just gave me a couple websites to use. I would really recommend Bege Gesucht. It's a German word, but it pretty much means like room search. And it's a website that you can look and look for people. And there it's a lot more organized when you're looking for rooms. And I kind of appreciate that. How many roommates are there? And then each of them have to always give a description. Like there's always a description on each of the roommates. And I think that's really nice. And I found in Germany too, they take into account like finding good roommates that fit into your like apartment very seriously. So the interview process for rooms was... (laughs) <laughs> Very intense. Yeah, sometimes there would be like two interviews. Oh, and I was like, what? That's yeah. completely different than like the U of T housing Facebook group. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so I'm like, like sometimes you just like get it after messaging the person. They're like, oh, you look interesting. All right. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, know, you have to interview for the room and the living situation as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a lot more intense, but I appreciated that too because I made really great friends during became really close with my roommates so that was one way I met friends and then another way was just the interns the intern network at some of these companies are massive so at Siemens there were 25 interns and we all worked pretty closely together we weren't all engineers the majority were like um, business students graphic designers other things along with Tesla so out of like my group of intern friends I would go travel with I was the there was two engineers and then there was like seven others So I wasn't, everyone always has this like assumption that I only hung out with engineers while I was there, but I pretty much did not. And I made at Tesla, like so many intern friends. So I think, and it wasn't very difficult. Like people there are so friendly. Everyone that worked at Siemens and Tesla, I should mention is also international. Um, There was like two people at Siemens that were German out of the engineering or was it in German? So Siemens was all English. Um, There were some meetings in German if the majority of people were German or all the people were German. So sometimes I'd be in the meetings and it would be German because I understood it. I just couldn't speak very well or with technical words. At Tesla, it was more German, which was nice because I got to like make my German a bit better at Siemens. And I got to move to Tesla and then no stuff, but then the technical words just like skyrocketed (laughs) was there ever any like funny language barrier things happening or was it always like you could find your way I wouldn't say there was funny language barriers but like you could just tell who was Italian or who's Polish or stuff like that (laughs) based off like how they would react to some of the things you would like instruct or what you would say like when I was talking to my suppliers and I found that really amusing and just like really sweet (laughs) (laughs) like I know one of the Italian contractors I worked with was very passionate about 
what he was working on and just like <laughs> was very vocal definitely cute. that sounds like a really cool experience and I guess kind of like bringing everything together like reflecting on all those ex- uh like different experiences you had what advice would you give um for younger students that are trying to figure out their professional life especially like when they're preparing for co-ops or just for PUI sure. so I would say the biggest things are I know this is super cheesy first off and I want you to not like just let it go gl- like leave it at a glance um but These three phrases have really helped me, even though they're just phrases, like how much can I really do? But if you just like say it over and over again, you kind of start believing it. So one would be never to give up. I was rejected so many times from Tesla. Like I should not have probably applied more because that was kind of like sad. But anyways, I never gave up. I just continued to apply, especially to California. And then you're like, oh, like if I can't make it, like I should just apply to other car companies. And that didn't happen. I just kept applying. I was like, whatever, like I can try. Another one is to stay positive. I know it's like really easy to like get into the negative mindset. They want everyone to stay positive during the whole experience. It can get very draining and you do feel like sometimes you just aren't good enough but you are and that company is just not good enough for you and then the third one would be everything happens for a reason so actually funny story is I was supposed to work at Siemens Energy in a different place in Germany they were like oh sorry like we can't take co your co-op because you're not affiliated with the school at the moment I was like oh no are you serious like I unaffiliated like this is the worst mistake ever like I could have had this job now I don't have a job at the time I was maybe this is good like I can look for another job like trying to stay positive and then I ended up just applying to Tesla like 100 more times I'm over exaggerating maybe like 10 more times and yeah and then I I got Tesla so everything happens for a reason don't think that the world's against you those are definitely like really inspiring things to remember throughout the process just because it is a very draining process of like applying to jobs and stuff but I guess like kind of thinking about like all of that too what was the most important factor in deciding what you wanted you personally like wanted to do um, for your internships (laughs) good question I didn't have a plan I (laughs) I went into it and I was like I just want to work at those places because the location, Mm -hmm. location was really big to me because some, a chance for me to go somewhere and not have to commit and then come back if I don't feel comfortable. And I think that's like the biggest challenge. Like a lot of people want to stay in their comfort zone. And I just want to like remind everyone, don't like travel, please. It's so amazing seeing the rest of the world and how people react and like different cultures. It's really interesting. Now that I know that, now I'm more of a person who likes the warmth, so I am <laughs> planning to move to California or somewhere warm, preferably soon. What's something or a skill that you developed over the last few years that made a big difference? And then what, like building on that, what do you think was the biggest um, lesson or improvement from that um, in terms of like your professional life? I, mean, I would say- some really hard questions. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. I would think the biggest lesson learned is communication, because if you can communicate that you are good at something, then you're good for an interview. Like you communicated that you understand what you're doing. You understand what you need to convey. The biggest lesson that is definitely asking for help when you need it. Like be dependent to a point where you're, it's making a negative impact on yourself and the people around you. So Um, don't think asking for help is like a weakness definitely ask for help so that you can succeed awesome that's all really really good advice um just to like wrap it up I'm thinking we do a quick like a quick lighter round of questions so I guess what's your favorite memory from living abroad and I guess also traveling abroad as well oh that's gonna be hard okay Probably um, so many good memories. <laughs> there's a lot, but um, one of them is meeting Elon. That was no way. One of the highlights. Yes, yes. You met Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, I wouldn't say meet because, like, I like the words left me. Like, my brain went blank. He was standing beside me, and I was like, "Oh no!" Like, 
later on like we were in the same room for a few hours and I was like you know what this is a chill guy like this is fine way more comfortable with it we were all having like beers and it was like a small group of us the only intern and then it was all over management but that was probably one of the biggest like yeah I think that was one of my favorite and then another one is all the interns get to like take buggies sometimes. And when it's your break, you can like just take the buggies and all around the Berlin factory, it is just forest. So we would go out with our buggies into the forest. It was so fun. We would race. And then one day my buggy got a flat tire in the middle of the forest. Oh my God. <laughs> what did you guys do? How did you bring it back from the middle of the forest? It was so embarrassing. It was my buggy too. So all the others were like, oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it was in the middle. It was like three kilometers out. There was no cars. Like you could not drive like a regular car over there. The tractor had to come. It was Friday night at like 4.55, we called like the tire shop or like the buggy shop. And I was like, I need a tire. Like right now they're like, we're closed. I was like, I'm going to cry. Cause they work on the weekends also. So they needed this buggy on the weekends. Like, cause they actually do work with the buggies. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is so embarrassing. And <laughs> so someone had to come and get me with a tractor. So the forklifts were on the back of the buggy and I was just like steering it. And like this factory is filled with people and um, everyone that's driving by because everyone's leaving now they're just all watching me and so forklift is lifting me up because the tire was completely fat it was so funny and then the next day so many people that I don't even talk to knew about it they were like oh yeah those interns they got caught in the forest like one of them got a flat tire and I'm like oh my god that was me <laughs> like no way one of them got a flat tire yeah. who was that yeah that was um I guess those, I'm so shook that you met Elon Musk. By the way. That is actually crazy. Do you have maybe like a go-to interview fit or anything like a good luck shirt or something? Turtlenecks. I find like whenever I wear turtlenecks, I just like always get the position. Um, I know that there's like now with like TikTok and stuff, there's lots of like people making memes of like buzzwords in English, but were there also like a German equivalent of like buzzwords that people use at work that like you also started saying and like picking up on? Or that, was that not really a I thing? mean, maybe it was just because I was in Germany, but like pass me the beer <laughs> because we would drink beer at work. That's but um, <laughs> no, I think like mostly it was the same. Like let's have an alignment meeting. Let's align. Yeah, let's do okay. alignments yeah like those <laughs> that was very typical yeah. oh coffee when we ever we were talking to the Italian suppliers they were like oh come over for a coffee um and I guess um yeah I guess that's about all the questions that we have today so thanks so much for joining us Christine it's been an honor to have you here and I'm sure lots of people learned lots and laughed a lot of us <laughs> um your experiences no problem thanks Sophia for having me today I really appreciate that also yeah and to all the listeners once more feel free to reach out if you have any questions about my experiences or if you want any advice or tips about anything I also have a YouTube channel where I have talked about some of these things. So feel free to check it out. It's, you can search up my name or search Life with Yarrow. I'm starting it. It's kind of just like a panel where I talk about my life, traveling and random other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm definitely going to subscribe, like turn on notification bells. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yes, please. Everyone. Awesome. And then for everyone listening, see you at our next podcast. Thanks. Bye-bye.